Hello everybody, my name is Molly Meep and welcome to Investigator and the case of the unconventional weapon. Yes, yes, it is that time once again for us to get our handsy hands on a brand new case. This time we have a new trusty sidekick called the Vanilla Chinchilla. Isn't that just adorable? Oh yes it is. But this time me and Vanilla Chinchilla have to investigate into the murder of MacGuffin the Puffin, who is found floating face down in a bathtub with a bloody toilet tank lid on the floor. Oh no! So let's go ahead and jump into this investigation and see exactly what happened and who was the one who caused this brutal murder. Alright, and there's the bloody tank lid. Oh joy! Is it Bobby Cat? Ah, good old Bobby Cat! I'm sure glad you're here, Investigator, but I don't know if we needed you tonight. Seems like a pretty open and shut case to me. Here, I'll put the details in your case file. See if you agree. Alright. What's the deets, my good Bobby Cat, sir? Victim, McGuffin the Puffin. Male, early 20s, found floating face down in his bathtub with his skull crushed. Ooh. Background check didn't come up with anything besides a few speeding tickets. Pretty blameless guy, by all accounts. He worked part-time at a local Panda Express. Aww. Hmm. Open and shut cases are often the most deceptive of all, Bobby Cat. Indeed they are. By the way, who's that with you? <laughs> Another good old trusty sidekick that I'm sure is probably gonna end up dying in some unfortunate way. Ah, allow me to in introduce my latest sidekick. His name is the Vanilla Chinchilla. <clears throat> He's so cute, I gotta give him a cute voice. <clears throat> I'm not your sidekick investigator. You know I'm always shadowing you for internship credits. Please allow my sidekick and I to inspect the crime scene, Bobby Cat. Right you are, sir. Of course I'm right. I'm an investigator. I'm always right. Alright, so I guess that's the body? Oh yeah, that's definitely the body. Looks like you missed something, Bobby Cat. Take a look at these bruises around the victim's neck. Oh, strangulation. Neck bruises, strangulation marks, the formation of the prints indicate claws. Hmm. So, alright then. My suspect has clawsy claws. Why? Well, that doesn't, that doesn't prove me wrong. MacGuffin could have been strangled afterwards. Either way, this is one stone cold killer we're dealing with here. Hmm, you have a point. Anything else on the body? Strangled and beaten to death. Not a nice way to go. Nope, indeed it's not. Wait, is that something else or is that his foot? Ah, Bobby Cat, take a look at this! Feathers? So what? He's a puffin! Puffins have feathers! I know your night vision is better than your color vision, but puffins are black and white, and these are brown feathers. Arg! <laughs> Poor Bobby Cat. Soaked feathers. Two feathers not matching the victim's coloration were found in the bathtub water. Anything new about that? Why would there be mismatched feathers in the water? Yeah, and they're brown feathers, so my indication on that would be maybe they're a chicken's feathers? Or a rooster's? I don't know. It's gotta be something burdesque. Alright, uh, let's check the toilet. This is odd! Bits of quills floating in the toilet tank? Well, better collect it just in case. Ew! Broken quills. Ah, looks like we have a porcupine on the scene of the crime. Pisces, uh, uh, Pisces, yes, it's a Pisces! Pieces of quills were found within the open toilet tank. I apparently knew his sign. Let's see, um, anything else about that? Bits of quills are floating in the toilet tank. Could just be messy grooming. Alright, what about the toilet? Ew! I'm not looking in there for clues! A successful detective never shies away from the search for evidence. In this case, however, anything pertinent has long since gone down the drain. <sighs> just like my life. I've got a sinking feeling about this sink. It's a sinky sink! Why wouldn't you? 
Uh, you still got a sinking feeling about the sink. All right, I guess I can't investigate that. Um. All right, what about the toilet lid? There seems to be blood on it. A toilet tank lid? Well, I'll certainly give them credit for an unconventional weapon. Those things weigh a ton. Yeah, somebody must be lifting. Toilet tank lid, the murder weapon, cracked with the blood of the victim on it. We'll send the body off for a forensic autopsy once you're done examining, but it looks to me like the cause of death was repeated blood trauma to multiple areas on the head. Ugh, ouch. <laughs> The weapon of choice indicates a crime of passion rather than rather than a per permediated murder. Just one hit would have been enough, meaning whoever did this had a real vendetta. Crimes like these, it's always one person. Not necessarily. The husband of oh, the husband or wife? See, even your intern knows investigator. In this case, of course, it's a girlfriend. Hmm, all the same, Bobby Cat. I think I'll keep an open mind. Yeah, because I mean, the, it's not always the, it's not always in the situation that it's one murderer. It could be multiple murderers. Who knows? Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. The toilet tank lid weighs a ton, so nothing new on the toilet lid. All right, all done. I've gathered the suspects down in the living room for questioning. Yes, let's get on with the questioning! Yes, I'm all done. Let's get out of here. Neighbors confirm that no one's been in and out of the house since 6 p.m. the previous night, so the murderer has to be one of his roommates or his live-in girlfriend. Well, you know what they say about keeping your friends close and your enemies closer! Alright! Oh, so I was right, it was a chicken! Um, okie dokie, I can't investigate anything, so I guess we're gonna do the questioning first. So let's get on with it. Let's start with you. What wonderful names do you have? <laughs> A throaty coyote? Okay, then. <laughs> ah, it wasn't me! It wasn't me! Please calm down, miss. I'm sorry, I just, I know everyone's blaming me, but I swear I didn't do it! I was the one who called the police! Why would I do that if I were the killer? Hmm, that's a good question. Miss, can you describe your movements this afternoon and evening? Well, MacGuffin was feeling poorly, so we stayed in bed watching Netflix together on afternoon. At around 7, he said he was going to, to go have a bath. When he wasn't back in bed by 9, I went to go check on him. Oh, so you guys are watching Netflix. Again, no copyright indeed intended. No, no. <laughs> I thought it was Netflix. Th that's when I found him dead in the bathtub. I screamed and called the police immediately. <laughs> Thank you, miss. You've been very helpful. The victim's girlfriend for four months. McGuffin was feeling poorly, so he stayed in bed all afternoon. At around seven, he said he was going to go make dinner and have a bath. When he wasn't back by nine, I went to go check on him. That's when I found him dead in the bathtub. I screamed and called the police immediately. Hope you feel better soon. I still got my eyes on you, throaty coyote. What name do you have? <laughs> the stricken chicken bugok? This is just terrible! A horrible tragedy! You were close with the victim. Yeah, I've known MacGuffin and the Puffin since I was 16! We took Brickalic in high school together, man! Whatever Precalc is! <laughs> oh, Precalc! <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that! I cannot read today, my eyes are like over blurred. I'm sorry. Can you tell me why anyone might have wanted to kill MacGuffin? Yeah, I can tell you why. I think it was that good-for-nothing girlfriend of his. To be honest, I mean, she isn't even employed. Just a total bum. Hey, now, I resent that remark. Uh, that's not a reason for her to be a killer. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know. Maybe grief is clouding my judgment and all. Ow! <laughs> clouding my judgment and all. I just think she's a real shitty character. I know I've heard the two of them fighting lately. Could you tell me where you were all day and if you heard any noise coming from the bathroom at any point? 
Yeah, of course, man. I have a funnel next week, so I was in my room studying until I went straight to bed at 8. I didn't hear a thing all day. Thank you for your help. A childhood friend for the victim seems to be genuinely saddened by his death. I have a funnel next week, so I was in my room studying until I went straight to bed at 8. I didn't hear a thing all day. That's all for now. Thanks. The borderline porcupine. I knew there was a porcupine on the scene of the crime, and there he is. Wow. Okay, this one looks a bit peeved. <clears throat> All right, listen up, you chumps. I'll tell you this just once, since it's obvious you couldn't pull water out of a boot if the instructions were written on the heel. It was that minx, Throaty. She's a coyote, not a minx. Shut up, shut up! I saw her! That stupid trap did it! I saw her run crying from the bathroom earlier that evening! The only pity is she didn't offer herself with that backstabbing jerk MacGuffin at the same time! Well, that's just not nice! I get the feeling there's some history between you three. History? There's history, alright! That cheating brought us for MacGuffin! Well, I sure thought we used to be friends! That son of a! <laughs> hey now! I'm going to stop you right there for the sake of this game's E for everyone reading! <laughs> yeah, calm your quills there! Please tell us what you were doing all day, Mr. Porcupine. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second there. I want a lawyer! I know my rights! I plead the fifth! Am I under arrest? I have nothing to comment. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get anything useful from him. The borderline porcupine, a once friend of the victim, the cause of their falling out was a girl. Claims he was Throaty Coyote. Oh, claims he saw Throaty Coyote fleeing from the scene of the crime earlier in the day. Suspect refused to give a statement. All right, goodbye, zee bye. Hey, what are you peeking from the corner stair there? Hello, Mr. Yak. <laughs> the Pack Yak. That's me. Could you describe your relationship with the victim? Oh, uh, to tell you the truth, it was non-existent. I just moved in here like a month ago. I found the room on Croak's List. What is up with Croak's List? Seriously, it's bad news. I bet you're really regretting answering that ad now. Yeah, I'm going to see about breaking that lease tomorrow. My mother always told me not to share a house with murderers. What an oddly specific lesson! Could you tell me if you heard anything between the hours of 3 p.m. and 9 p.m.? Well, let's see. I had dinner in the living room at 5. Around 7, I headed to bed. That's when I saw MacGuffin in the hallway walking towards the bathroom and said hello. My mother taught me to be polite, you see. By 9, I was in bed reading Fifty Shades of Hay when I heard the most Blood-curdling scream from the bathroom. I rushed out to find Throaty on the phone with the police. That's very helpful. Thank you very much, Mr. Yak. The Pack Yak, an almost total stranger who now regrets his decision to find roommates on Crook's List. I had dinner in the living room around 7. I headed to bed. That's when I saw MacGuffin in the hallway walking towards the bathroom. By 9, I was in bed when I heard the most blood-curdling scream from the bathroom. You have a nice day now. Not quite as open and shut as you thought, eh, Bobby Cat? Something's a bit off, it's true. Plus, that borderline porcupine is starting to look mighty suspicious. Hmm, a jilted lover who kills the interloper and frames it on the wayward mistress. Yeah, I like it! Bobby Cat, you worry me sometimes. And that chicken's testimonial felt real forced, as if he just went into total denial mode. All that he never claimed to hear Throaty scream. Huh? Oh boy, and what crackpot theory do you have about the pack yak? Nah, that bloke seems pretty alright. I don't know. <laughs> he seems kinda shady. 
In any case, I would like to investigate the area for further evidence. Okay, now can I look at stuffy stuff? Oh, I can. What's this? This notice is addressed to McGuffin. Dear McGuffin, despite our long time status as friends, I am at the end of my rope. I really need that $15,000 that you borrowed from me several years ago. I have included a detailed invoice and interest rate below. Dang! $15,000? What the hell kind of borrowing money is that for? What were you buying? A house? Huh? It's from the stricken chicken! Since how the hell does a chicken have that much money? What's he doing? Selling seeds on the black market? Or eggs? Payment due bill. A collection notice from the stricken chicken indicating the victim owed him money. Again, the one thing that can cause murder. Money. A good life lesson. Never mix friendship and money. Indeed. Uh, alright. Ooh, what's that? Hmm, what's this? It's written by the deceased. Dear Throaty the Coyote, it pains me to do this, but here are 99 reasons why I need to break up with you. <laughs> oh, that's so mean. 99 reasons? <laughs> why not just simply say I don't love you anymore? <laughs> wow, this is scorching hot. It's scorching mean. Good eye, the vanilla chinchilla. I'll take that for evidence. A breakup letter. A so assorted letter written by the late victim, listing all the reasons why he wanted to break up. Ouch. Alright. It's a really old picture of the borderline porcupine and the throaty coyote. Aww, they're holding hands. I guess they used to be pretty serious. Hmm, the heart is a fickle mistress indeed. An old picture, an old picture of, of the throaty coyote and the borderline porcupine holding hands. No wonder why he's so pissed off. <laughs> is there any other cluesy clues? Anything? Nope, I guess I'm back into questioning. Alright, Miss Coyote, explain yourself. <laughs> Woohoo! How are you holding up? It feels like my heart's breaking into a million pieces. I want to crawl into bed and listen to Lincoln Park for a year. Why does the borderline porcupine hate you so much? Well, we used to date. Yes, I um, I managed to deduce that. We just weren't working out, so I broke up with him. I guess he was more hung up on me than I thought. Though, cause he went totally crazy. Maybe I shouldn't have moved in and started seeing his roommate. It's really not the best idea I've ever heard. Did you know about this breakup letter? What? Where did you find that? In a rubbish bin. Well, that's where it belongs, clearly. My MacGuffin would never break up with me, e ever. The very idea, how dare you? Besides, would a dame as good looking as me get broken up with? I think not. And um, though I am the one who breaks up with others. Take care, miss. Now, oh, well, I am completely opposite of you. Okay, what about you, Mr. Chicken? What's your final next week about? Oh, um, ah, uh, underwater mineralogy. Oh, I love collecting rocks! Are these feathers yours? Err, uh, ah, uh, um, where did you get those? Well, you know, I've been molting lately, and my feathers just keep getting everywhere. Throaty keeps complaining that they're clogging the drains. Thank you, Mr. Chicken. I don't know, your responses are a bit kind of shady. In your statement, why didn't you claim to hear Throaty scream? Uh oh oh I must have just forgotten. That's all. Now that I think about it, I do remember her screaming. Can I change my statement? That's not how it really works. 
it's too late. It's written down forever in my notebook now. Because I take nifty notes. <laughs> I always forget to bring an eraser. <laughs> Can you explain this collection's notice? <laughs> hey, you can't just paw through people's stuff. Of course I can, I'm an investigator. Actually, legally, we absolutely can, sir. Yeah. <laughs> ah, all right, I'll confess. Things between McGuffin, the Puffin, and I have been a bit tense lately. I loved him like a brother, but he was terrible with money. Plus, he was letting Throaty the Coyote stay totally rent-free in his room. That's just ugh. That's not cool. I'll be seeing you. Oh, goody goody. What about you, Mr. Porcupine? Care to give your statement yet? The exchanging of dots. How about now? No? Nice weather we've been having lately? Alright, I get the hint. <laughs> Do you know the stricken chicken? We knew each other through McGuffin, but we weren't really friends or anything. He seemed kind of stuffy, and that's all you're gonna get out of me, copper. Why did you and Throaty Coyote separate? That scurvy tart! Please, Mr. Porcupine, just the facts. Facts? There's nothing remotely factual or logical about that woman's heart. She left me saying she meant someone else. Little did I know it was for a man who I used to once call a brother. She also told me I shouted too much. Me! I think I've gone slightly deaf in my left ear. Goodbye. Again. Ah, uh, hello, officers! I'm afraid you'll find the house empty of helpful clues pertaining to me. As an apology, might I offer you a glass of water instead? Well, you might be right, Mr. Yak. You'll understand that we have to look anyway. Of course, of course! I'll take a sip of that water, though! Why do I got a bad feeling about this? Glass of water, the vanilla chinchilla has stopped using the clues folder to store your stuff. <laughs> What's your impression of your roommates in the short time you've known them? I find the borderline porcupine to be quite objectionable. He picks arguments at the drop of a hat. I avoid all disclosure with him. The throaty coyote I can converse with civilly. However, we have very little in common and I have always been a bit of a gruff bachelor. I have no real impression of the stricken chicken or the late MacGuffin, the puffin. They were both retiring fellows and kept to themselves. As my mother always says, gentlemen should. Thank you, Mr. Yak. So, where are you thinking of moving to next? I'm thinking of checking out a micro apartment or a tiny house. They're all the rage lately. Um, I hate to break it to you, but you might not be able to fit into one. <laughs> uh, you have a nice day now. Let's not insult our suspects there, Vanilla Chinchilla. But who investigate her? Uh oh, what's wrong, Bobby Cat? Yes? The autopsy and the background checks have just come back. They check out, except for two. The throaty coyote has some charges for petty theft and shoplifting. And the other? The other is, I can't believe this, the pack yak has been previously arrested on suspicion of murdering a series of roommates. What? I knew he was shady. Background checks, the pack yak has been previously accused of murder. What? Yes, although he was acquitted. And the autopsy? The cause of death is listed as strangulation instead of blood force trauma, so you were on the money there. But look, this is just the strangest thing. The toxicology report indicates his blood was full of poison. Uh-oh. Autopsy report, the victim apparently suffered from poisoning, strangulation, drowning, and blunt force trauma. Jeez. Thank you, Bobby Cat. That unfortunately confirms my suspicions. Please gather everyone. It's almost time for the part where I overdramatically point my finger at the killer. Are you ready to accuse the murderer? Yes, I am ready. 
Ready as I'll ever be. I'm called you all here for a very important reason. This is the part where I overdramatically point my finger at the killer. I'm telling you it wasn't me. I'm telling you it was her. The Vanilla Gingilla, I'm going to give you a chance to show off all you've learned. Who was the dastardly murderer? Um, okay. Accuse the murderer. <laughs> the Vanilla Gingilla, you have to actually point at a suspect. Oh. <laughs> Whoops! Oopsie! Whoopsie poopsie, my bad. Okay, so... Let me think this. Because... Again, there was that key hint in the beginning where Bobby Cat suspected that it was only one suspect, but I have my sneaking suspicion that it's multiple suspects. I have a feeling that they might have all had a hand in it. I mean, I don't know if I could choose multiple ones, but I just have a feeling that they all had a hand in it because Throaty Coyote is the, the ex-girlfriend. So, of course, she would have a reason to kind of, like, hide behind that overconfidence and say, Hey, nobody breaks up with me. I break up with them. But I have a feeling that she might have been dumped and took that very seriously. You don't want to piss off crazy girls. Trust me. Um, Stricken Chicken, his feathers were found at the scene of the crime by the body. And then the strangulation marks on the neck. Claws. We have a porcupine who has claws. And then the pack yak... He was just acquitted for being accused of murder, but he just gave the vanilla chinchilla water, which I have a bad feeling was possibly poisoned. I'm going to accuse all of them. Oh my god, I can! Oh my god, I can! Yes! Accuse them all! They're all guilty! Well done! You got it! It was all of them! Yes, I was right! I knew there was something suspicious about all of them. Little did you all know, each of you independently conspired to murder MacGuffin the Puffin. The first was the Pack Yak, otherwise known as the serial killer, the Rice and Bison. The Rice and Bison poisoned MacGuffin much earlier that day. As a result, MacGuffin fell unconscious in his bath. The second killer was Thorny Coyote. After MacGuffin left it for his bath, you went snooping and found the breakup letter in his room. Consumed by rage, you stormed into the bathroom and strangled him where he lay. In his weakened state, he could hardly put up a fight. No! no! Okay, so she was the one who strangled him. But I, I was right about her having a hand in it. The third was the stricken chicken. You walked in on the carnage after Throny had fled. MacGuffin was still barely alive at that point. You could have saved him. Instead, you coolly condemned him to his fate by holding his head underwater. Buh, 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 As for you, the borderline porcupine. Come at me, bro. I ain't scared. Let me guess, you used the toilet tankler, didn't you? Upon finding MacGuffin passed out in the shower, you remembered having seen Throaty run crying from the bathroom. Evilly, you decided to frame her for the crime, bashing the victim's head into a pulp. However, you failed to notice MacGuffin was already dead. Your act was the most brutal, yet the most impotent. So I was right then, okay. I just had those two mixed up. She strangled him, he bashed him. Well, 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 I must admit, investigator, I'm impressed. Your powers of deduction are extraordinary. Let me guess, you're the psycho that's gonna kill my sidekick, right? Why, thank you! Before you take us away, it's my turn to ask you one last question. Uh-oh. Why would I only poison MacGuffin when I could poison the entire house? Oh no! Wah! Arg! No! I kill you! Oh no, investigator! I don't feel so good! The vanilla chinchilla! The glass of water! Oh no, I knew something was wrong with the water! Ugh. No! Men! Apprehend the rice!
Citizen Bison! Investigator, I'm calling an ambulance! It's... it's too late. You're a real scumbag, Bison! I'll see you locked up for life for this! Ha! Maybe you will! Maybe you won't! Take him away, boys! Poor Vanilla Chinchilla. I won't be sorry to be done with this case. Bobby Cat, that entire household was real toxic. Oh no! The Vanilla Chinchilla, he did it for the internship credits. Cause he was just such an adorable little guy, wasn't he? <laughs> Aww, again, I lost another sidekick to another evil serial killer sadistic murderer! Ugh, it's always somebody, isn't it? <laughs> but anyways, guys, that was Investigator and the case of the unconventional weapon. And we can finally say that this case is now closed. It is solved and the file is put away forever and ever. But, unfortunately, this is the very last one for the Investigator series, and I'm so sad to say, because I really have enjoyed playing these games, they're so fun, and I hope that in the future that the developers will continue to make more of these, because they're just so fun, even though they're, they're kind of short, and they're simple point-and-click adventure little investigations, but still, I enjoy them, I love them to death, I think they're so fun and so interesting, and I would love to see more come out in the future. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you all again in the next video. Bye-bye! What? No, give me back my kids. I went to eight years of med school for that. No, don't. The crocodile is... Also an expert competent. Cut down by my own bone saw. Hey, help! He's coming my way! Oh, no! If I'm going down, I'll take you with me! Oh no! Oh no! 